this video, I'm going to show you how to overcome a very troublesome GM pass lock and VAT system. Now, anybody who's watching this video probably already experienced the pain of having one of these systems in their uh, GM car. And what happens is, over time, in the VAT system, it typically loses the resistor value, it starts wigging out, and it, it just, just generally screws up. And it, it just keeps blinking that security light or the theft light. Just driving the insane won't allow you to start your car and go anywhere with the thing anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two methods. If you have a VAT system, the first part of this video is going to obtain, obtain to you. And the second part of this video is going to um, basically go over the pass lock system. The pass lock that I'm talking about is pass lock 1 and pass lock 2. It will not apply to certain pass locks that have the bulb check wire. So if you have like a Cavalier or something to that effect, also the Pontiac Sunfire. Off the top of my head, it, those are two cars. There's a couple others running around. But this is basically going to cover 99% of you people that have these systems. So if you have the VAT system in your GM, Cadillac, Olds, Pontiac, all those guys, basically in your key, um, this is not a GM key, obviously it's a Chrysler Century key, but in your key you're going to have that small resistor pellet that's located right in that area on the key. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself a multimeter. It doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just using a pretty cheap $40 Craftsman multimeter. You're going to grab that meter, turn it on, and set it to ohms. Um, typically, most of the, in the impedance you're going to find is going to be anywhere from uh, 450 ohms somewhere up to 15,000 ohms. So you're going to want to make sure if you have a setting on your um, multimeter, make sure you set it as high as you possibly can. Now basically, you're going to take one of your uh, terminals on your multimeter, put it to one side of that resistor on your key, take the other, put it to the top and you're just going to look over at your meter, you're going to see what the number is. Okay, so let's just say, for instance, mine is 500 ohms, okay? Now i got the black on the top, red on the bottom. You're going to take those two out, and you're going to reverse them. Put the black on the bottom, put the red on the top. Look at your meter again. Now this number is not going to be the same as the first number. The first one is going to most likely be lower. Um, if you have one, like I had on the first one, theoretically again, 500 ohms, the second time it's 570. The 570, the higher of the two impedances, is the one you need to write down. That's the one that you actually need. The higher of the two is the resistance you need to, to, um, to keep an eye on. So now that you have that, don't need the key any longer. Now, um, you're going to need to either A, go to the store, or buy them from us. If wherever you're going to get them, get yourself one of these VATS packs. These you can find in relay packets that come with uh, the resistors um, or, or whatever, wherever you get these things from. This one here comes from something we just actually sell. It's a DEI. I forget the part number, but it comes with 12 resistors on it. The lowest one is going to be really low. For instance, this guy here is 800 ohms. And on the other end, you're going to find the opposite. You're going to find a really high number. This one here is like 17,000 ohms. Now, somewhere in here, you're going to find the one you're actually looking for. So, let's just say for just for our interest that this one here is 580 ohms, okay? Now, even though 580 and 570 are not the same thing, keep in mind that when you're working with resistors, they are all what's called 10% tolerance. So, if you have 580 ohms, higher than that, you're going to add 60. So, the highest you can use is 610. 570 minus 60, again, is 510. So, if you're within 510 or 610, you're good, okay? So, now, there's two ways that you can beat this problem in your car. First one, which I would recommend, is if your car acts up but not very often, it only happens maybe say once every two weeks or once every month, this is going to be the right method for you. Okay. Now, on your relay, I'm just using a standard single pole double throw relay. Okay. Now on the bottom, I hope hopefully you're familiar with these, but you're going to have 85 and 86 on either side, which is the coil. The top is 87, middle is 87A, bottom is 30. Now these wires are going to correspond, and I'll go slowly for you. Of course, you can always pause and rewind if, if I lose you. Okay. Now on the left side of this, 85, keep that guy here. 86 is the other side of that coil. Okay. This here is power that I have from an external power supply. Okay. So. Let's just say, for instance, you have a remote starter in your car. Now, the remote starter throws a ground and running or a negative output when it's under remote start, okay? 
that wire is going to go to the left side of the relay, which is, say, 85. Okay. So this is only going to activate when the remote solder is engaged. Okay. This one here is going to have to be the opposite of negative, which is going to be 12 volts positive. Put that right there. You can hear that relay click. Now, on the top, pin 87. This is where you're going to want to take that resistor that you already located previously. Twist that right into there. Now, since VATS works through resistor but through ground, you're going to want to have this run to your vehicles to in a straight ground. Okay? I don't really need to connect it. You get the gist of it. Just put this to ground in your car. Now, the middle pin, 87A. This one here, you're going to have to interrupt the VATS wire in your car. Most of these are going to be two white wires, okay? So, in your vehicle, you're going to have to need to find them. They're super thin uh, white wires. Now, if you take a multimeter and you set it up, you're going to look, you're going to see one wire is going to be ground all the time. The other one, if you, actually, if you, if you read it, it's going to show a resistance. Cut that wire, okay, and you're going to take the middle pin 87A, or for me, yellow. This is going to go to the um, car side meaning the computer, okay, the one that's going to go down through the firewall to the body control module. The other side, uh, 30, this side here you're going to want to put to the key side. So what's going to happen is when the remote solder engages, it's going to grab the resistance from this wire and it's going to apply it to the car's computer. And it's only going to do that when the remote starts engaged. When you start the car normally, these two wires are going to stay closed all the time and it's not going to affect the system in any way what, whatsoever. Okay? So that's how the VATS part works. Now, if you do have a pass lock or a pass lock 2 system, by your ignition column you're going to have three wires. I substituted the white wire because I'm using a white background for a gray. Okay? So the gray um, or white in your car may also be a red or a white wire. That one actually has positive voltage on it. You're going to have a yellow wire, which is the resistance wire in your car, and you're going to have black. Okay, black is basically just ground. So the only wire you need to focus in on is that yellow. That's the resistor wire in your car. So if this is your, your key cylinder here, for instance, here, this is the side that runs down into the car. Let's just make pretend that, that your car is just completely going crazy. Your car will never start, okay? So the best thing you can do in that situation would be is to take 85 on your relay. You're going to want to put this to straight ground, okay? The opposite side of the coil, you're going to want to put this to the pink or the pink-white, which is the primary crank and ignition wire in the, in the car. So every time you start that car up, it's going to click this coil on this relay and it's going to activate it, okay? When you located this yellow wire underneath your steering column, you're going to want to just simply do the same thing. Cut it, strip it back, and instead of measuring it the way we did with the VATS key, you're going to want to do it this way. You're going to take your multimeter, put it in between these two wires like this, Start your car up, get your measurements. Again, make pretend it's 500 ohms. Okay, fine. Turn the car off, do it again. It should be, again, about 500 ohms. Take the two, reverse them. Start your car, get your reading. Again, let's just say it's, again, 550 ohms. Fine. So what you're going to do is take this guy, take your, two, your 550 ohm resistor, put this straight to ground. Again, this wire here is going to ground, this is going to pink, your primary ignition wire, the middle pin 87A is going to go to the key side, orange or the bottom pin 30 is going to go to the car side, so every single time you start your vehicle it's going to show it this resistance value every time, and it's going to trick the computer into working regardless of the situation. If this does not work for you, I'll tell you another trick on how to do it. You can simply get into your car, 
locate this yellow wire, cut it, start your car. Usually it takes about three or four times. The, the security light is going to continue blinking. Leave your key on with the new resistor. Say like this one. Put it in line of these two. Leave your key on for a half an hour. Okay, after that time elapses, turn your key off, turn your car back on. Your car will automatically learn this new resistance right here. It'll, it'll permanently bypass your factory any theft system, but obviously that's a lot better than not being able to sort your car at all or going to a mechanic, which will cost you a fortune. This is another way to trick your system. This is not the way I would recommend doing it, but if you have no choice, this will also work. So that's it. Good luck with your pass lock system. Hopefully this was a helpful tool to you.